Hey folks, glad to be with you guys here again. At present there are zero viewers, but we're just starting, so hopefully there'll be a few more people uh, coming around and uh, joining later. Um, I'm starting a little bit late today, about uh, almost 10 minutes late, because I just had a cool, interesting conversation with Ryan Steinolfson. Um, you need to check his videos out. He's very, very really interesting guy as far as internet marketing and reputation, online reputation thing goes. Uh, had a really interesting conversation with him, connect with him a little bit. So check him out. That was totally unrehearsed, unplanned, and it's not even in the show notes. Just look up Ryan Stein Olson. Um, I'm not exactly sure the best way to spell that. Let me go ahead and, and look that up myself. so that you guys can get an idea of who he is. All right, I think I've got it right here, yeah. A guy named Ryan Steinolfson from Accelerated Marketing. He's on YouTube. The name is Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Steinolfson. I might be pronouncing that wrong. S-T-E-I-N-O-L-F-S-O-N. So Ryan Steinolfson. So. Thanks to him for uh, allowing me to chat with him for just a little bit. That was really, really interesting. We're going to get started today on the guitar, brand new Guitarpreneur uh, Hangout today. Um, I don't know if the camera, maybe it's just been so long since I've been on here, but it seems like the camera has is, is got a bigger shot of me than normal. I don't know if it's just because it's recording in the highest definition possible or what. But uh, if you're on the events page, you can definitely ask me a question, and it will, appear, it will pop up here, and I'll be able to answer it. Just today, I haven't, I haven't done a hangout in so long, I'm almost rusty on how to do it. I actually did it a little different this time. I went ahead and posted it on my Google Plus communities, posted it on Facebook, posted it on everything I could think of to try to get people to come because there hasn't been a lot of you know uh, people maybe not aware of it or just haven't had time or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the time of day I'm doing it. There's everybody that's at work or something like that. But. Um, I wanted to see how many people come and show up from all those different communities who are able to. Uh, so we'll see what happens. It'd be nice. I'm not sure if this is uh, viewable to the public or just my, you know, just everybody that's on my circles. So this may not even be live on public. Let's go to the Hangouts page in Google and see if it is live, just in case. We'll go to Hangouts and see if it's even live. I hope it is. We'll see here in just a second. And now if it's not, that would be very interesting because, oh, there it is. There I am. So I am live on the Hangouts. So that's very cool. People uh, will be able to see me live, so it's not just limited to my, um, just limited to my, you know, people that I invite. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, today's topics, we're going to be just doing some updates. We're going to do the same thing I always do. We're going down the line, guitar-related, guitarpreneur-related, which more, you know, is the businessy side of things, and some miscellaneous stuff at the bottom, which I hope to cover uh, pretty soon. And it's going to be some interesting stuff that I've been kind of you know, throwing around myself. Uh, for one thing, as I was about to say, I haven't really done an update or a hangout forever because, you know, people keep asking me, when's your next hangout? When's your next hangout? Well, I haven't, I, I just felt like it wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be able to justify just having a hangout just to be having one. I want to be able to have some things to actually talk about, you know, maybe play a little guitar here and there and things like that. I definitely want, you know, just play around with guitar. I haven't really come up with a whole lot of new stuff. You know, most of the stuff that you see have been on my videos. So let's just go ahead and get with the updates. Now, if you look at the show notes below, if you're watching on YouTube, it gives you some links to different things I'll be talking about, and it'll give you the show notes uh, of this, what I'm going to be covering today, the topic I'm going to be covering. First of all, updates. My scheduled videos who I, that I've had in my YouTube queue forever are finally pushed out. I've got brand new content on there. Um, I actually sat down. This is hard to do. I, I wanted to get rid of the schedule video so that I could have more in the moment content. But the problem is when you want to have in the moment content, <laughs> it happens when it happens, whether you got something scheduled or not. So I was able to push all the other videos out, finally able to get some new stuff, more up-to-date stuff in there. 
But the problem is that I I sat down and I had all these ideas just last week. I guess it was maybe it was the first of this week, and so I recorded like four or five videos, and now they're they're scheduled. <laughs> They're scheduled to, to release within like the next, you know, uh, two or three weeks, something like that. But I want to be able to still space it out at least to where I'll be able to insert a in-the-moment type, you know, video. Maybe it's a cool look I just come up with that I just want to insert for that week. And I don't want to bombard everybody with a bunch of content. I don't want to turn people off with all this other content that's going on. So I still have some things scheduled so that I can maintain a consistent, you know, uh, release of material, but I still want to release more up to date. Hey, I just come up with this, and I want to, I want to share this with you, or even just you know some some random hangouts. A lot of here late, lately, I've been just playing guitar in the bedroom, just practicing, and uh, thinking to myself, why not just you know I'll, I'll record video ideas that I have, and so that I won't forget about them. And sometimes I'll be practicing, I'll be like, why don't I just you know flip on hangouts and have a live hangout, you know, why don't I just do that, so a lot of times I'll be in the bedroom, well, not the bedroom, but the office here, playing and practicing, and I'm like, I just need to, you know, upload something fresh, you know, right in the moment, so I definitely want to do that, and before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and put my phone on quiet mode here, so that it does not uh, ring while I am um, having this hangout, that has happened before, that's annoying, very aggravating. And while I'm at that, let's turn off my other device, put it on uh, vibrate. Okay, so back to what I was talking about. So the scheduled videos are now cold. Now there's fresh material that's scheduled, but I'll still be able to, when I want to, put some other stuff on, like maybe, you know, throughout the week, some other things. I don't want to overload everybody with a bunch of stuff. Um... Really big news, the, the webisodes for my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course, hopefully, cross your fingers and toes, will be completely done in around a month. So hopefully, by the 1st of August, maybe no later than the middle of August, I'm hoping uh, the, the webisodes will be done, and then I can get started on compiling the course in one complete uh, course. Uh, for everybody as a download. So we've got to do the download first, since it's pretty much all already done. And then we'll go into doing DVDs a little bit later on down the road after we compile all the things that need to be done for that. Um, so the videos are hopefully going to be done within three weeks. But then I, when I get the videos, I have to sit and proof them all. I have to sit and uh, um, do any neck diagrams that need to be done, add any notes, tips or notes and things like that. And for those of you who have checked out bluegrassguitarcentrals.com, uh, you're kind of familiar with the format of the webisodes. There's all kinds of... Uh, Diagrams, and in between the diagrams, you have all these random tips in different boxes, and then there's tablature, and then there's some text, and you know the earlier episode webisodes like that. But that's coming along very nicely, and I'm hoping to get done with the videos. The video editor will hopefully be done within three weeks. He told me, he assured me that he could do it in three weeks. So we're going to get that done. And uh, the cool thing is that while I'm doing my part, I've got the tablature person doing his part, and when he's done, he sends it after I proof it and correct him, make any corrections. He sends it over to the graphic designer who then sends it to me and I can okay it, send corrections, and then kind of finalize everything. So that's how the whole process is working. It's working pretty good. Maybe hopefully the next course I have, I'll be able to train my tablature guy or somebody else to do the neck diagrams for me. I enjoy doing it, but it does take up quite a bit of time, and it will get done quicker if somebody else is helping me along the way. So those will be done in around a month. Please check out www.bluegrassguitaressentials.com slash webisodes to go directly to the webisodes page. And if you leave off that last part, it'll take you to the page that has the sample videos of the course. But you can get an idea if the course is right for you or not. So that's uh, webisodes. And the other update I've got uh, as far as BGE, which is Bluegrass Guitar Essentials, webisodes 7 and 8, they were released, I think, last week, maybe, I think, last week. The average is they're, they're releasing about every two weeks. Now, this, this latest one's probably going to release a little bit longer because I'm still yet to get this latest video that's supposed to be uh, coming to me, hopefully, as early as next week. Um, but I want to I make, make sure that you still have and take advantage of that introductory pricing. The webisodes are $15 if you're watching this and it's current. They're $15. 
until a new episode is released, and then that price rises to 25. So you definitely want to get in on the introductory pricing before it goes to 25. Now, on that note, I wanted to make sure that if you do purchase webisodes seven and eight, see, there's they're in webisodes so that you can pick what you want to learn, and you know, kind of you know, mix and match what you want to learn. Uh, if you don't need the scales, if you don't need that, maybe you can maybe you can work on your picking, maybe you work on your strumming later on, maybe you work on songs, maybe you work on licks, whatever. They're pieced out like that so that you pick what you want to learn. But I do highly encourage that if you're going to get seven and eight in the webisodes, which deals with minor scales and um, I think practice tips and scale summaries, I do encourage that you get webisodes five and six to go along with that because five and six really goes into detail a lot more about how to use scales, the most important scales to use, uh, all the different diagrams, because since it's covered in webisodes seven and eight, I didn't want to, want to spend a lot of time, I mean, since that's covered in webisodes five and six, I don't want to spend a lot of time rehashing what I'd already covered in the previous episodes whenever uh, the minor scale versions of that came out. So. The diagrams and everything are included, but in the video, I don't really go in as much detail as I do in 5 and 6. So if you want to get 7 and 8, make sure to get 5 and 6 as a companion to that. That's the only I think that's the only exception to the rule on these webisodes as far as mixing and matching. I just wanted to, to uh, let you know about that so that you didn't, wouldn't get webisodes 7 and 8 and wonder where all the other material is. A lot of it's covered in webisodes 5 and 6. So but definitely go check that out. There's some links below to where to go for uh, the site and webisodes and things like that. It's real easy to find. And uh, so let's get right now into guitar-related stuff, okay? The next phase of the thing. Um, I had a winner of the Vibe Strings giveaway. A while back, you know, maybe a month ago, I released a video about a giveaway for Vibe Strings. And I don't think I've got a pack here with me anywhere nearby. But I've been, you know, working uh, with Fran Gaffney, the creator of Vibe Strings and the owner of Vibe Strings, and had an interview with him. There's a link to that below because we're going to do an update on that here in just a minute. Um, but the, the Vibe Strings, I had a giveaway, so we had a winner, and I'm just going to go ahead and go to that uh, video so that I can tell, that I could say the name of the winner because I can't remember it by, it, by heart. But uh, let's see here. Let's just go to the Vibe Strings giveaway. And the name of the winner was, and he did receive these, by the way. He received them, and he, he's, he's been playing with them and uh, enjoys using them. Uh, the name of the winner is Michael Hasduck. Maybe it's Hadduck. I don't remember. I don't know how to say the last name. But... Uh, he says, thanks for hosting the giveaway. I appreciate you giving us this opportunity to win. I'd love to get these Vibe Strings a try, as my acoustic strings are beginning to really wear out by now. Um, so he was the only one who followed the instructions at the end of that video to win the Vibe Strings. There were some specific instructions as what to do, and there was another person that made comments but never really followed the instructions. So, and I tried to contact him to at least let him be second place, but I never did hear back from him. So, I would, the second place was a pack of strings from Ernie Ball. Well, not strings, but picks from Ernie Ball. So, I'll just use them in a, a giveaway later on. Actually, I think he did contact me. He's, I think he told me that he didn't need the picks, but just go ahead and donate them as another giveaway to somebody else. So, I'm going to do that. And, I, and his name was Daniel Richard. So, I thank, thank you, Daniel, for that. Uh, but Michael, let's see what his reply was. He ended up receiving the strings. So let me go back here to where I was and go to my YouTube inbox. And uh, I'll kind of share what Michael talked about on that. So we have, I got the strings a few days ago. Sorry for not letting you know as soon as possible. I tried them out and they sounded different at first, but after a while I got adjusted to the new tones. Thanks for sending him over. I'm locking the new strings. And he actually um, lives in Canada. So I had to ship the guitar uh, strings to Canada, which was a little bit of a hassle. So I think from now on, you know, you learn as you go. <laughs> so I'm thinking from now on, I'll probably just, you know, do giveaways in the U.S. But that wouldn't have to worry about any, you know, weird shipping policies or anything like that. 
Uh, I've had that. I've done that one time, and, it, and the package just didn't get to the person, and it just made it a really big disappointment for the person. So that's uh, probably just going to be limited to the U.S. Uh, hopefully, so because it, it takes a, a little bit of different shipping works different everywhere else. But anyway, so there's the results of the Vibe Strings giveaway. And thank you, Michael, for participating, and Daniel, and everybody else who uh, watched the videos on the review of the Vibe Strings. And if you haven't watched that review, go check that out. Uh, I don't have a link below, but you can check out Vibe Strings on my YouTube channel, and it should pull it right up. It's my review of Vibe Strings. They're really good strings. Uh, Fran right now is working on making uh, kind of a bluegrass gauge. Uh, ever since I talked to him on that interview I mentioned earlier, he's been working on uh, you know kind of upgrading the acoustic side of things before moving on to electric. And I really admire that in somebody who actually listens to the needs of his customers. So you can tell in the interview that he does. So uh, the next related thing is uh, there are some new electric guitar videos for licks that are coming up. That The ones that I told you about were earlier that were scheduled. Um, those are scheduled now and they'll be uh, releasing this month. Um, next week I've got one more video before that happens. But um, after that there's some more there's going to be some electric guitar videos. I recently sat down and created some electric guitar videos with my Ibanez back here, you can see. Ibanez RG 4EX1. Love that guitar. Still loving it, enjoying it. Recently created some videos for my totally free guitar newsletter, uh, which you can find more about by going to secretsoftexasbluesguitar.com slash newsletter. Um, I recently created some videos for that based on some, uh, some cool blues licks by uh, one of my favorite guitarists and uh, if you haven't checked that out you've got to check out the newsletter because it's totally free to everybody that signs up uh, all you do is you put in your email address and you have instant immediate access to all the to, well to it'll, it'll come to you and uh, I think once a week there'll be a new video once a week and uh, it's a lesson of things I've learned over the years and it's packed with all kinds of elect mostly electric guitar so if you're into electric guitar leaks and things like that, check out Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar .com. And uh, for some other videos that aren't available on YouTube that I have unlisted but are available through the newsletter, check out that newsletter section on the site. But I have some new – anyway, I said that to say this. I sat down to do those videos, and I had some other ideas in my mind because I've been sitting before previously practicing watching um, – one of my favorite, another one of my favorite uh, guitar players, Joe Satriani, and I was watching some licks for you know some different songs that I really enjoy, and some of the most difficult licks that I've heard in my ear, I've heard in my mind, but uh, from these songs, but I have never really sat down and you know s watched them, and so I actually sat down, pieced these things together, and created some uh, the night before, and then the next night I was practicing, and I was like, I've just got to make a video of these. So I made some video electric guitar videos of some of these licks from two of his songs. And uh, also there's another awesome electric guitar video that I have coming in the works after those are done about how to – my, my um, main legato technique that I use. Uh, I find myself going back to this legato, this particular one, time and time again. It just my fingers just tend to do that, and I've seen uh, one or two other players on YouTube use the same technique. And so I thought, well, I use this a lot. Let's sit down and make a tutorial video on this. So there's another good video for electric guitar for you guys. And it just, I just try to come up with this stuff as it happens. And a lot of times I get ideas before I'm able to go to my guitar lesson suggestion page and actually work on those videos. I am so far backlogged behind those that it's not even funny. Actually, that was just in case I didn't have any ideas of my own and I could have something, some other resource to go to. That's the reason for that. But I really need to get on the ball and get some more of those released. And uh, I've got a couple more of mine I need to work on for Tony Rice stuff. A lot of people have been requesting me to play some Tony Rice stuff. And so there are several of those that I've got to sit down and work on and hopefully make available pretty soon. Now, I don't want it to be in the extent of the Tony Rice originally untitled videos. There were four of those, and there were enough information in those to, to create a course in itself. Tony Rice doesn't play around. I mean, he's <laughs> he is a genius when it comes to guitar. And to sit there and analyze his stuff is just it's time-consuming, and it's a lot of ground to cover. So if you want to get started 
learning Tony Ross stuff, you definitely need to check out uh, the Originally Untitled videos that I have. That's what it's called. That's what the name of the song is called, Originally Untitled. And uh, somebody asked me to do videos on that, and I did, and I got covered Tony's parts, White's parts, the rhythm sections, and all kinds of different things, different chords that you can use for bluegrass. And so that's where I would, if you're advanced, if you're a little more advanced on your picking and you want to learn more about Tony Rice and some of, that, some of the stuff that he can do, that's where I'd probably start. Now, if you're a beginner, definitely start with my beginner stuff because that stuff will leave you in the dust. It will leave you choking on Tony Rice's dust. Okay, so don't get involved in that. So let's see who, who we got viewing here. I've got one viewer, it says, on the bottom right-hand corner here. Uh, once again, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to refresh this page. Uh, I've got somebody that says he's going to watch, and there's somebody that says they're watching now, and that's Neil Santos from ScaleTrainer.com. Uh, that's what it says he's going to watch, and it says there's two watching, and he's one of them. So if you're watching, Neil, a big shout-out to you. Thanks so much over at ScaleTrainer.com. And uh, so let's just go ahead and resume where we're at here with uh, the Hangout. So those, those are the new videos that I've got scheduled that's coming up for electric guitar. The other, other big news, I just finally passed 500 videos. I'm up to like 517 now. I just passed 500 videos on YouTube. Now, those of you that are watching this publicly on YouTube, you'll, you'll be like, 500 videos? I thought it says 400 something. Well, there is, you know, 60 plus videos that are on my newsletter that are unlisted. So you're not going to be able to see those live. The only way you can have access to those other 60 or 70 videos is by going, and it, it's growing every month. I'm putting more videos on there. So it's growing, and that's why you can't see that I've got, you know, over 500 videos is because very, uh, quite a bit of them are unlisted. There are some that are private as well for, for my personal use, but the majority of those un, uh, hidden videos are for the Texas, or the Totally Free Guitar Newsletter over there at Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar dot com dot, uh, slash newsletter. That's where those videos are. But I was so stoked I reached 500 videos, and uh, it's all thanks to you guys. You give me a reason to keep doing videos. You give me a reason to keep practicing and keep getting better on guitar so that I can help you guys get better. That's one of my biggest goals is to help other people not just learn how to play guitar. I mean, there's a dime a dozen people that can teach you how to play guitar. It's how to get better at guitar. It's how to enjoy guitar again. You know, you're, you've been doing it so long in so many years that you're just frustrated that you're still stuck in the same old rut. Well, I look for those ruts. <laughs> I've been in some of those ruts, you know, and I know how frustrating that can be uh, to be stuck there and think, you know, I know I, I watched Steve Vai, I watched Joe Satriani, I watched Tony Rice, I watched, you know, all these other guitar players I love, and you're sitting there going, I know that I can do more on guitar. I know there's more to be done than what I'm doing. I'm so stuck. How do I get out of this? So that's why I designed courses like Texas Blues Guitar and Bluegrass Guitar Essentials is because I've, I could see at those ruts from where I was and how I got out of those ruts and how I think a lot of people that come to me with the same questions are things that I've answered time and time again in, in my YouTube videos especially, but in my courses and things like that. And that's my goal is to help you people get out of ruts, not just play guitar, but play guitar with more confidence uh, with more being more comfortable with your instrument, you know, you're getting in the jam session, you're getting, you know, play in front of a live audience, and you you space out, and you're like, oh, I'm scared. You get stage fright. With me, I don't do that because it's like I'm most myself when I'm behind a guitar um, because it's just something. It's the thing that I'm so comfortable with and so good at that, it, and not tuning my own horn or anything like that. But it's 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 that confidence level. Something I'm so confident with that I, I feel you know that I can do something with this instrument, you know, and uh, and not only that, it's not for other people. A lot of times we worry about things about other people, what they think, and it's not that I'm playing guitar for other people as much as it is I'm playing it for myself. And when you're up there playing guitar for yourself instead of trying to impress an audience and trying to you know impress everybody else out there, yes, to an extent you've got to do that if it's a paying audience, you know, and you're going to a concert and you're you're the main performer, or whatever. You've got to put on a show. You've got to, you know, give them their money's worth. But if you don't have fun, then it's not worth any of that. Just give them all their money back because 
you've really lied to him because you haven't been sincere with yourself. You haven't been enjoying giving this to other people. And so that's what it's all about, getting behind the stage and, and having fun and then playing guitar for yourself. You know, there comes a point to where I think I read this or heard this recently, when you, you know, for writers and authors, they write for themselves. They do it because they love to do it. You know, when they get to that point of that first draft and it becomes a second draft and it becomes a final draft, yes, they do have a reader in mind that they're thinking of writing for and, and how to please their audience and what would make their audience enjoy this book. But ultimately, it's all about you write for the fun of writing. That's what Stephen King says. He says he never did it for the money. It's always because it was his desire to write desire to create and that's the way I am I play guitar because I love to play guitar and I know you play guitar because you love to play guitar if you didn't love it you wouldn't be doing it okay if for those of you who are just now starting to play guitar stick with it it does pay off and I'm not talking about monetary I'm talking about with the sheer joy of being able to have something in your hands pick it up in any music store you go to uh, any you know any church, somebody lets you borrow a guitar or any you know place that you go to that has instruments and you're able to pick it up in your hands and say, this is feels at home to me. I mean, that's what it's all about. So that's my little rant on that. I didn't mean to get past all that, but the point was that I finally reached 500 videos on YouTube. Now I'm you know, skyrocketing my way upwards, trying to see, you know, not really trying to see how many I can put on there, but I'm glad that YouTube is around for that uh, uh, venue and that availability. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the last month, in the month of June, I counted, I uploaded a total of 18 videos. Now, some of those were private lessons. Some of those unlisted videos, too, by the way, are lessons that I give in private, and I just send people the YouTube link so that they can watch it in the comfort of their own home. For more information about how to get those, you can scroll down below to after the show notes, and you can see on the YouTube video page, uh, you can scroll down below the show more area in the show notes, and it'll have some information about how to uh, get a hold of me for online lessons, private video lessons, and things like that. Some of those videos are unlisted for that reason, but uh, 18 total videos last week or last month, including private lesson videos, lesson videos for YouTube audience publicly, and some other personal unlisted videos for like uh, I just did a new um, a new video for uh, I think the Texas Blues Guitar website or something. Uh, so all in all, I mean, that's pretty good for a month, 18 videos a month. I mean, that's that's over half a month in days. You know, if you do one video a day, half a month is 15 days. Well, this is 18. So that's pretty productive. You know, and you, you look at it and you're like, well, that ain't much, you know. Uh, sometimes you have days where, it's, where you're off or off in, in the sense of vacation off, time off. And sometimes you have days when you're you know, a guitarpreneur and entrepreneur working for yourself. Sometimes you have days where you are, you have off days. Like you have bad hair days, where you have bad work days. You just things do not work right. Things are not working right. They're not working out. They're not lining up. All the pieces aren't fitting together, and you have off days like that. So when you can look back and see that, hey. I uploaded 18 videos, and that means I sat down for so much. My videos average about 20 minutes. 20 minutes per video, I mean, hey, that's where the hours have gone, you know, a lot of the hours. So a lot of times you get hard on yourself for not getting things done. If you just look back at some of the things you got done, then it just it gives you a new burst of energy, and you're like, hey, I did do a lot of stuff. You know, things, things got done. Okay, so uh, the, the last thing before I pick up my guitar and play just a little bit, because uh, you're probably tired of hearing me talk and want to see, see some playing. Um, just had a recent video to climb past 1,000 views, okay? And that hasn't happened in a while. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and find it and see what the view count is up to as of right now. So let me reload the page here. Okay, as of right now, the total view count is 1,631. We had 35 likes so far, 28 comments, and zero dislikes. That's awesome. We're, we're already past 1,500. I'd like to see how many views we can get of this thing. I'm just going to keep pushing it because it's got some awesome content. That is a video of uh, me and Kenneth Burris. We were playing the Bluegrass Jam. 
and uh, it's just me interviewing him and jamming along with him for an hour, okay? So I'm going to right now, before I forget, put it in the show notes uh, so that I don't forget that, okay? That way you guys can go to it in the show notes. Now, let's see here. Um... There we go. Apparently, it just added it to me, to it before me. That's awesome. That's very cool. Hmm. Anyway, maybe I maybe I already added it and didn't realize it. Anyway, that is the video of me and Kenneth Burris playing guitar together and uh, doing some awesome, awesome picking. He phenomenal singer, phenomenal guitar player. It was nice to be able to sit down and play with somebody um, who challenged me. You know. Uh, who I was able to sit there and just watch what he was doing and maybe pick up a few licks for later. <laughs> Some different things like that. Um, but he gave me a few ideas of some other videos I'd like to do. But anyway, that video has creeped up to 1,630 plus videos of now, as of now. And you can see that in the guitar-related section, the very last point of the guitar-related section of the show notes below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, on the actual uh, website of YouTube. Okay, so let's, before I get into the second part of this, I just want to play a little bit. And for that, I have recently been, and you'll see this when you see the uh, the uh, electric guitar videos, I've recently been doing my camera angle a little different. And I'll put it to the side here, and then I'll, I'll put it down so that you can actually see what my hands are doing. That seems to work a lot better. I mean, I really like that a lot better. Much better angle. I don't have to worry about, you know, getting far back and way far back and all that. So I'm just going to sit here and just noodle around a little bit. Like I said, I haven't been coming up with a whole lot of new things. I've been practicing some new songs and things like that for a new gr a group that I've been playing with. Oops, wrong chord. playing around with some things. Let me show you kind of what I was doing there. These are some of the tricks that I've been using in a few songs here, like I was talking about with the uh, uh, new gospel group I've been playing with. Uh, they're not really new, but to, I've been playing with them recently. So, And I noticed, I think the huh, camera is starting to mess up. So if, if the time is delayed, I apologize for that, which it probably will be. I don't know what causes that to happen, but anyway... Here's what happens here. All right. Actually, let me see if I can go ahead and disable the camera and then turn it back on, okay? Um, yeah, you should still be able to hear me, okay? So I'm going to turn the camera back on. Check. Okay, good. That's a good little trick. All right, so there's a cool little thing that I can I do here when I go to A. A7, I play an A7 probably more than any other A chord when I'm playing an A chord. 
And other than that, I play an A sus4, A7 sus4 a lot too. Sounds really awesome. So I take that A7, and basically I've got a middle finger on the D string second fret, a ring finger on the B string second fret. I take it and I move it up a whole step, which is two frets, and I replace the ring finger with the first finger here. And I still play the A string down to the B string. Okay, we're just walking it up basically the scale tones. So this looks kind of like a, the, the top half of a C right here. And for the next fret, this is going to be the fifth fret, you're going to do the same thing as the A7 shape and play all three, all four strings again from the A to the B. Okay. Now, actually, this is part of, if I did this, I went up two more steps here and did the same shape. We're now using notes from a, a D scale. Okay, so we could do that. Okay, so, but it works as well in A, so it's really cool how that works. And what I did when I moved up here is I made a little bit of, uh, this looks like a D7, which you have your A7 shape, you bring it down into the next two frets, I mean the next two strings, you got uh, ring finger moves to G, middle finger moves to E, and you put your first finger down, now you have a D7 shape. So you got second fret, first fret, B string. Now if you take that and you put it on the A7 shape here, put your first finger down, now you have an A major 7. Sounds very bluesy, I mean very jazzy. Major 7 chords are really pretty, really jazz sound. And all I did when I got to this point on the 7th fret after I did this, to work my way back down to D, I took this and I put this major 7 sound here. And that is a D major 7 because that's the, the D note here. But I'm using it with these and using that A there, and it really, really makes it shine. Move that down two steps. So now we're on the fourth fret and the fifth fret with these two fingers. So this is G, and this is D, and B. And then back to end the D. You can either do that. That G kind of gives it a suspended sound. So what I typically probably do after that is do that little D shape that I have been talking about time and time again. Another way to play a D with uh, an inversion. Bass. That's the third in the bass. If you don't play the A string. If you play the A string, it's the fifth in the bass. So anyway, back and going to here, here's what I did when I got down to the A. Or Each time I'm picking that A string to get that nice uh, A tone going on. Okay. Or. Okay, so you can just go back to regular D there. But anyway, that's basically my thought pattern when I was playing D earlier. Okay, so there's a little guitar stuff for you. Hope you enjoyed that. Let's get back up here and resume the talking points and uh, probably do one more little jam session there. Because time is ticking away. We're already uh, almost an hour into this. And we definitely want to get all these topics covered. Uh, as you can see behind me, I'm getting a few, you know, extra posters putting put up. Of the, this is my personal wall of fame. There's some of my favorite guitar players over here on this side, and then there are, you know, things and accomplishments that I've achieved over here on this side, one of which is including uh, a picture of my Texas Blues guitar uh, little full-color printout uh, as, you know, 
evidence for me that yay, this got done, you know. So anyway, um, oh by the way, <laughs> on the electric guitar videos, you're going to see the chair squeaks terribly. So I decided to get this thing down and, and wrestle it to the ground, and today I turned it over, WD-40 to all the nooks and crannies, tightened everything up, and now no squeaking. Silent. Unless you go forward too far or backwards. And that may have actually fixed too. There you go. You hear that creep? But I have to force that to happen, so I don't have to worry about that now. But you'll see a little bit of that on those electric guitar videos that's coming up. All right, now to a lot of the good stuff to talk about. Uh, Guitarpreneur related, business stuff related. I'm really excited to talk about this next topic. We are talking about, um, lately, let's just go ahead and start this off by saying I have been listening to podcasts for many years. Um, probably started with Smart Passive Income podcast by Pat Flynn. Either it was that one, I'm pretty sure it was that one I started with when I started learning because I think I learned about Podcast Answer Man from Pat Flynn um, and a lot of other podcasts from that. And ever since I listened to him, I found numerous other ones. But the problem with a lot of this stuff in business, not only not only podcast wise, but business books, you know, in the modern business world today that we see, a lot of it has a worldly, materialistic view of accomplishing things in life. Okay. Now, for those of you that watch this and and aren't you know aren't religious or anything, then <laughs> I'm going to get into some b biblical stuff here uh, because I believe it's important in running your business. Okay, um, so I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, and a lot of them have a business, uh, worldly business view. This is more passive income deals with you know success in the in the in the terms the way that world look at it looks at it. Um, some other Podcast, you know, I've listened to uh, podcast answer man. He is a Christian. Um, he he's learned a lot from you know uh, smart passive income, some other places. You know, you you take uh, oh internet business mastery. You know, trying to basically what I'm trying to say is a lot of these business books and a lot of these business podcasts uh, they look at success the way the world looks at it. Okay, and um. The thing with that is, is it causes to have too much of a worldly, materialistic focused mindset. Okay, it's it's just the only way I can explain it. You know, I wish I had that book in here. I do not, but uh, um, there's a book that I recently felt a nudge to go purchase, and it's been on my mind for several weeks, and I finally went and got it the other day, and. Uh, I'll probably talk about that here in a minute. Anyway, that, that book, I'll, I'll, I'll get back to that in a minute. So anyway, that leads me to all of a sudden I'm sitting here watching YouTube, okay? I'm sitting here watching YouTube. I don't even remember what I was watching. I'm probably another business uh, seminar or something. I watch a lot of those on YouTube. Um, a lot of business information, a lot of seminars from people like Brian Tracy and Jim Rohn and all those other, you know, uh, big business names. And all of a sudden, I was, you know, I was frustrated, you know, I was trying every day, try to read the Bible, try to get direction for where the Lord wants me to go in my business, what I need to be doing, you know, what, what principles are, godly-wise. All of a sudden, out of my frustration, I feel a nudge from the Holy Ghost to look, the word the Christian entrepreneur came in my mind, Okay. And I don't know if Christian Entrepreneur podcast or just Christian Entrepreneur came in my mind. I think it was the latter. But anyway, this comes to my mind, and I'm thinking, do a search for Christian Entrepreneur. And I'm getting chill bumps right now thinking about it. Do a search for Christian Entrepreneur. And so I did. And lo and behold, answered prayer right there. Because there's all kinds of awesome videos on YouTube that deal with business from a Christian and godly perspective standpoint. Uh, I think one of them that I saw was really good. I think his name was Amos Johnson. If I'm, I may be wrong on that, but uh, it was a really, really good uh, uh, business podcast dealing with Christians. Um, and there were several more on there. Now, they weren't necessarily podcasts, but they were Christian entrepreneurs on YouTube. Now, if you do the same thing, go to YouTube and type in 
Christian entrepreneur, you'll probably get some of the same results that I did and, and find a lot of good uh, material there. Really good stuff on there. But that led me to think about, you know, podcasts, because I listen to podcasts probably more than I do YouTube videos, because with YouTube videos, you have to sit and be attentive, and you have to watch and be aware. But with podcasts, you can do your work of a day and just listen, okay? So you're listening to, to uh, uh, podcasts or audiobooks or music while you work. You have to pass the time, you have to keep your mind focused, things like that. So I come across two specific Christian entrepreneur podcasts that I've been listening to religiously, quote unquote, pardon the pun. But one of them is The Success Edge with Tyler McCart. Now, I've got the link on the show notes. Go below and look at the show notes, and there's a link to, directly to his podcast on iTunes, okay? Uh, it's called The Success Edge, and he's got some awesome, awesome content on there. They're very short, maybe 17, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. And I've already went through a couple of different interviews with a guy that he has named Chris Rice. Those were amazing. Though his take on things are, is just really encouraging. And this is some good stuff to actually put in your brain to listen to while you're out there working out, where you're walking, you know, through the neighborhood, when you're working in your work, whatever you're doing, listen to it in your car on your radio, on your on your, uh, iPod or whatever. Very, very good stuff. So I found him. Uh, Tyler McCart, and he's also got a YouTube page, but now he's more focused on his podcast and some very, very interesting stuff. And the next one that I found was a, a, a woman named Mia Davies, and her podcast is called God-Centered Success. And I also have a link to her podcast below in the guitarpreneur-related section of the show notes. Um, Hers is very interesting in the sense that she had been through, she made six figures. She had all kinds of success in the world standpoint. But she had drifted away from God for some reason. I can't remember what it was. And then all of a sudden she came back and realized that God had a plan for her, had a purpose for her. And her calling, in her opinion, her own words, her calling, and well, I'm paraphrasing what she said, is to make the business world aware of God's direction in business. And I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but it's along those lines. And I've been, you know, uh, watching a lot of her Facebook videos. She doesn't do a lot of YouTube stuff. It's mostly Facebook. Uh, uh, but again, Mia Davies is her name. I listen to a lot of her stuff. And it's a fairly recent podcast. She's only up to, at this point, she's only up to 16 or 17 podcasts. Tyler's up to like 40-something or more. But Mia is up to a And I recently attended one of her webinars, and I loaded three pages Three, three notebook pages of notes on on uh, viewing business and viewing social media, you know, trying to be successful but in, in a godly way is awesome. Really good stuff. Mia is the real deal. She's got some good content out there and uh, really good stuff. you got to check those two podcasts out. If you do nothing else, if you get nothing else out of this hangout, <laughs> that would have been worth it because that right there will really – change your perspective on how you view business. And it really will lighten the load of trying to fly through business life and pressures and thinking it's all it's all on me. I've got to do all the work. Yes, there is a point that delegation is necessary. But at the same time, um, you got to realize, and as Mia says it, you've got to realize that when you realize that it's God who has got the results in his hands, and it's God's, uh, it's it's up to him to perform the work. If you're doing his calling, doing what he wants you to do, then it's up to him to make the results happen. Then all the pressure of, of performing and getting everything done per perfectly is gone because it's not no longer what you do as much as it is in what God's doing. Okay, Very, very awesome podcasts there. And I'm going to reset the camera once again because I think there's a little bit of a lag on it. Okay, so... Now, uh, going along with the, th the idea and the theme of guitarpreneur related, the next topic I was going to talk about is a goal, a milestone goal for me, finally achieved. And I talked about this maybe in my last hangout, maybe maybe a couple hangouts ago. Uh, once again, it's been like a month since I've done a hangout, three weeks to a month, because I just haven't had anything to talk about. But now, uh, from the show notes, it's covered today. So I get a lot of good material today for totally free right here on YouTube. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, a milestone goal for me finally achieved 
we got a guy to mow our lawn. And that is, that is, just blew my mind when it happened. It's funny how, speaking of God once again, it's funny how God answers prayer <laughs> in ways you never thought of yourself, which proves right there that somebody, that a higher power is behind it, okay? So here's here's what happens. Me and my wife, we're, we're uh, paying rent, and uh, our, rent is, our rent is a certain set amount. I don't want to go into that, but it's a certain set amount, and we pay it to our landlord. Well, we've recently been having problems and issues with borrowing a, a lawnmower going back and forth, and it was it was just a hassle, and we would see it was going to turn into a big deal because our lawn was getting high. We didn't have a way to mow it, things like that. And I've always thought, you know, it would be nice one day to have somebody mow our lawn for us. Or, you know, before I was married, I thought that for myself. It would be nice to have a lawnmower, you know, got to mow the lawn. And because if you think about it, I got to it, – it's funny how when you think about things – all of a sudden they start appearing everywhere and you start noticing them when you didn't even notice them before, period. For example, you see a car and you start noticing it or some you know, one of your buddies starts driving a car or something like that, a certain car, and you've never really paid attention to this. You never really saw this car in your life. But all of a sudden you're going down the drive you're going down the road driving in your own car and there's there's that exact same car, there's that car, and there's a car again and it's just like it and you're like, they're everywhere. Yeah, for example, for me, I've got this little old, you know, beat up Chevrolet Cavalier 2002. It's a coupe model, a two door, and it's everywhere I go. I see this car, and I'm like, "Where's my car? There's my car." <laughs> and you never noticed it before. So the whole thing with the lawn is like, I'd be going down the road just recently and looking at, you know, businesses everywhere, and they have people working in the factory while other people are being hired to mow their lawn. They're a business, okay? They don't hire people in the factory to go out there and mow the lawn for them. I used to have to do that. Uh, I worked in business one time that would not hire a lawnmower. They had me go out there and do it, even though I was supposed to be working on other things. I was the gopher, the go-to guy. I did everything else, you know, stuff like that. But anyway, it was like all of a sudden I started noticing this everywhere. The funeral homes had a lawnmower guy. The, you know, factories had a lawnmower guy. Even some of the restaurants have a lawnmower guy, you know, and I'm like, it's not wrong to want a lawnmower guy. <laughs> it's not wrong for me to want somebody to mow the lawn so that I can focus on my business because it's serious to me. It's it's something I take seriously. It's something I want to work at, something I want to strive hard to achieve, and yes, that can come become a burden if you don't let – if you don't let God take control of it, and if you don't ask Him and, and ask for direction from Him, that can become a, a, a huge burden. So here's here's the story of this, okay? So our rent's a certain set amount, and all of a sudden the landlord notices that we're having problems with the lawn mowering and all this stuff, and to borrow the lawn mower and all this. And it was going to cost about probably. I think 90 bucks, somewhere upward of 90 bucks a month to get our lawn mowed because it's like $30 per thing, and we elected to have it mowed every 10 days or so. So that's about three times a month. That's about 90 bucks. The landlord sees this, and he's like, you know what? You guys have been really good with your rent, uh, good at keeping things up in the house and everything. And I can see this issue with you guys, and it's, I can see it's going to be a frustration, so I'm going to fix the whole thing right now. I'm going to lower your rent by such and such amount, and it turns out that it's exactly, if not a little more, than what we needed to pay the lawnmower guy. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? See, me, here I am thinking the whole time, okay, if we're going to get a lawnmower guy, I'm going to have to make more money. I've got to sell more courses. I've got to add more value. I've got to make more videos. i got to do this. i got to do that. Me, 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 me. God's not in the picture anymore. It's all about me. There's a, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about how God uh, um, or Jesus invites people to the wedding. If I'm not getting my wires crossed, he invites people to the wedding. And all of a sudden, the thing that I notice more about anything than this in this is every person's excuse was, blah, 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 Lord, but let me first. Lord, I'd love to do that, but let me first go tend to my garden. Let me first go marry this wife. Let me first go do this. And the two words that always stood out to me was me first. <laughs> me first. 
But the Bible tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things be added unto you. Talking about all these things meaning, you know, your, your raiment, your clothing, your food, things like that, which also could mean things that you have need of, things that you're working to strive for, that you're in line with God's goals for you to pursue. So here I am going, how can I do this? I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to make it happen. Even though we've been praying, you know, Lord, help us make this happen. Help us make this happen. But the whole time we're striving to get it done ourselves, you know. And all of a sudden he turns around and he says, your rent's dropped. Go take the excess and pay your bill. That's just, oh, uh, that's awesome. I just got a, a thought about that on, um, you know, the widow woman. Here she was. She had debtors. And Elisha came by. Not Elijah, but Elisha came by. She had debtors, and they, the debtor was, was going to sell, or was going to have to. She was going to have to give her sons away as payment because she didn't have anything else. And Elisha says, "What do you got in the house?" And well, I've just got some oil. I've just got you know a barrel. He said, "Go borrow vessels, not a few. In other words, get a lot, and go fill them with oil and pay your debts and live off the rest." Okay, so. Here we are paying this guy to do our lawn, and we got like 10 or 15 bucks left over, so we can live off the rest of that. Now, obviously, our goal is not to leech off our landlord and, okay, now i got a free ticket. Let's go use this money elsewhere. Our goal is to still try to keep achieving our goals, try to keep getting products out there, try to keep uh, getting our business you know, built up so that we can go back to what we were paying before, maybe even more because he's been kept giving us a great deal on rent so that we can pay our way and we can we can make things you know do what's right and so it's a small it's a slow process but things like this just seem to work out whenever you're just focused on your goal and whatever God is in the midst of it okay like I said I, I was running around like a chicken my head cut off Lord how can I get this done how am I going to do this? I've got to get more sales. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. Get more lessons and more. I didn't have to do nothing. I didn't have to do nothing. I had to trust him, and that's where it comes in at, okay? So the milestone goal of getting a lawn mold is done. Mark it off. It's done. It amazes me. It amazes me how this works, okay? And there's all kinds of stuff that just pops in my head while I'm talking about this stuff that I could talk about, but... Uh, Maybe one day I'll just sit down and we'll just share some stuff. We'll just rant and invent, and a lot of this really good stuff will come out. A lot of different things that I see uh, happening. So next thing we're going to talk about, guitar preneur related, is the newest interview video I've got coming out next Tuesday. Next Tuesday, that'll be, I think it's July the 8th. Let me go check real quick just to make sure. Uh, the right calendar app here. July the 8th, yes, Tuesday, July the 8th, my very brand new interview video will be releasing. That video is, I'll go ahead and tell you who it was. Uh, it's uh, all-time mentors in um, guitar, in guitar instruction. I had something on my shirt. One of my all-time mentors in guitar instruction. This guy really helped me get started in teaching guitar. I've been playing, I've been doing YouTube lessons ever since about 2007, but that's different than YouTube is free. When you have to get out there and you're like, well, I want to be able to start doing this, but I want to charge people for it. And you you start getting all kinds of self-esteem issues happening there. Well, it's not good enough. I'm not good enough to teach people. I'm not good enough to be a guitar teacher. I'm not blah, 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 blah. And you start downing your own self before you even give yourself a chance. That's what I was doing. This guy helped me get out of that rut. He helped me get started, and I am forever indebted and grateful to him for doing that. His name is Nick Minion, okay? Now, what I want you to do is you just tune in next Tuesday. Uh, the whole interview is about, oh, how long is that? I think I want to say about an hour and a half, but I'm not sure. Let's see. The whole interview is about, yeah, about an hour and a half. One hour, 28 minutes, and 52 seconds. Might as well say an hour and a half. It's a lot of good, awesome content. Now, the cool thing is this is the first ever interview that I had that wasn't, you know, um, the person I was interviewing wasn't on the screen with me. <laughs> the thumbnail makes it look like he is, but he's not. 
I actually took a screenshot of like some of his pictures and put it up there to make it look like there was two people. But what it is is a phone conversation. I took my phone and he called me from, well, I thought it was London, but he lives in France now. He is a born British. He's got an accent, but he lives in France now. And all that he's been able to achieve has, been, has, has made this possible. And it's all within the field of guitar lessons and guitar instruction. And so I look up to him at big time as an inspiration and mentor. But anyway, I took my phone. He called me from a landline. I basically sit it up here in front of me, and the, the speaker on my uh, Logitech C270 webcam picked up the whole thing. And I went back and listened to it, and I, I was worried about having to do a lot of EQ because it sounded a little muffled, but it sounded better listening back to it than it did live. So that's coming up an hour and a half full of loaded with awesome information and some of his background and some of his, you know, it's more of a business thing. You know how my interviews previously have been guitar-related questions, play us a lesson, you know, give us some guitar information, and then you go to the business stuff. This interview is mainly about how he got started in business, some of his ideas in business, time management, things like that that I've gone over in several other interviews. But since he wasn't present, we wasn't able to do any kind of like guitar licks or lesson or anything like that. So check that out next Tuesday, uh, July, July 8th. That will be releasing around, around you know, 10 o'clock or 10.30, 11 o'clock uh, Central Time in the morning. So I'm excited about that. This is a really good interview. It has a lot of good links for you to check out. The next thing, speaking of interview videos, a previous interview video I had uh, was talking about, oh, before I get there, before I get there, I almost forgot. The book I was telling you about earlier that I, I uh, was going to mention when I was talking about the, the guitar or the Christian Entrepreneur podcast, the book that I had a nudge, another nudge from the Lord to go purchase, and it happened twice. Is I was like, Lord, okay, I get the point. I need to go get this book. It was called God is My CEO. Okay, now I don't have a link to that, but if you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the show notes, there's an Amazon link that you can use to go search for that. Okay, God, God is my CEO. Now I seen this book a couple years ago. You know. But I just kind of left it there, kind of brass through it and kind of left it there. Well, now it just recently recently came out with the 10th anniversary of it. And so I got the new version. I'm glad I waited because now I have the new version, which has, you know, a lot more material in it. And so this is just another way that the Lord has directed me to focus on him and not the business. Uh, because it all comes from me. Every good and perfect gift cometh from the Father above. Okay. Coming down from the Father of lights above, okay? So all good gifts come from the Lord. It's not about how much I can get done, how much of this and how much of that. A lot of times we worry about that, and it becomes such a an ulcer, you know, an ulcer-causing thing. And we don't need to worry about that. We need to worry about, am I doing what's pleasing to Him? Am I doing what's pleasing to the Lord? And only you can decide that. Nobody can decide that for you. There are people that can criticize you. That can, you know, you've got to judge yourself by this word, regardless of anybody else. Uh, you've got to judge yourself by this, not by any podcast, not by any other book. A lot of people, you know, are really, really narrow-minded when it comes to, well, this is the only book that there is, and you can't, you can't, if you need to find the answers, it's here. The answers are here, let me tell you that. But God has also given other people wisdom so that you can ask counsel of them. And the Bible says in the, in the uh, multitude of counselors, you know, you're, uh, there's wisdom in the multitude of counselors or something like that. I read the other day, I can't remember what it goes like. But yes, there are other books and resources out there, but you, you've got to base everything you do against that word to see if it lines up. Everything that you listen to, everything that you read, everything that you do in your business needs to line up with what that word says because you're not going to be prosperous if you don't meditate on that word. And I can prove that. Joshua 1.8, I've read this several times. And this is, I haven't read this in a while, actually. This is a... a a scripture that I go back to for success. A lot of people are chasing success. Here's some more verses that I was thinking of that really come to my mind, and I've noticed this lately going into Proverbs. It talks about how greater, how much greater wisdom is than than rubies and silver and gold. Seek her as treasure because she's far worth more than that. And if you can make all the money in the world, but if you ain't got any wisdom on how to use that money, where to put it what it needs to go to, you're lost as a ball in high weeds. I mean, seriously. 
So Joshua 1.8, let's go ahead and read this real quick. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. That's prerequisite because the next thing that happens is for then. In other words, once you do this, this will happen. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Not maybe you will, not, it might be nine times out of ten. Thou shalt. It's definite. You follow the word, you're going to have good success. You're going to make your way prosperous. Okay? Just as seek first the kingdom of, hot, kingdom of God, and then all these things have added unto you as prerequisite, you've got to seek God first to get the answers. Just the same thing here. You've got to seek God first. And there's some work involved, believe me. I was, was in a Bible study last night at my church, and I, I said this, and it, it come to me all of a sudden. A lot of people want an easy way out of doing things, and it, life doesn't come easy, okay? I'll just tell you right now, the Bible even says, Ask, and it shall be given. Knock and you shall find. Or knock and it shall be open. Seek and you shall find. What does that mean? Well, before you find, you gotta go seek. Before the door is open, you gotta do some knocking. Before you receive anything, you've got to ask. So there's some work involved. You've got to do your part. How do you expect God to do his part if you're not doing your part? If you're doing the world's part, Trying to find God, trying to find the world's way of success, getting out there doing what the world says to do. You know all these psychology, psychological methods of trying to get this next sale and all this stuff and bunk. It may work, but I'm telling you, you would save yourself a lot of trouble, and a lot of stress if you just go by this right here. Now that's my little message, my little sermon for you guys, okay? But anyway, this back to what I was getting to. The interview video, speaking of that, that was God sent it, or God is my CEO. That was a book I was mentioning earlier. Okay, fast forwarding, back to where we're at now. There's another interview video that I did that is now, to, as of yesterday, the 2nd of July, released uh, on a press release, big press release, and I had like hundreds of links listed to tell me where to, get, where to find these press releases. So that's the cool thing about that is, is those are all backlinks to that video, to that interview video, which gets me more exposure to Bluegrass Guitar Essentials to more people out there who could benefit from that. And also more exposure to Fran, uh, the Vibe Streams, Fran Gaffney's Vibe Streams. That's the interview video I'm referring to. Recently, recently got uh, released publicly in a press release, and now hopefully I'm going to keep some track of it and see what, uh, if the views are going to increase because that'll be really awesome. That's an awesome interview video. I've also left a link below in that to that uh, below. So um, so there it on the guitarpreneur related things. That's uh, the very last link on there. All right. So now uh, before I get into the very last thing, I'm going to take a sip of water here because it's getting dry. Let's play a little bit more guitar here. Reset our camera. And I hope, you know, just playing around like this, you know, really uh, keeps your attention. Uh, let's bring it up just a hair. It's a little too far down. Get situated on the stuff. So, like I said, this is just me messing around. tonight and I haven't even played in the last day or so. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Hopefully you got some uh, good material out of that. Um, like I said, sorry if it's not very you know new material or anything like that, but maybe you can get something out of there. So, last thing we're going to cover today, and uh, it's going to be more along the lines of another hobby that I've had for a long time, so it's not going to be really guitar related at all. Um, Maybe a little business related, not really guitar related. Just something I've been th thinking about and pondering on, and you know different things like that. So uh, anyway, is miscellaneous stuff, and this is also on the show notes below. Basically, I've been toying around uh, once again with the idea of writing. Um, I write songs. Uh, all my life seems like I've, I've been writing in some form or another, whether it's blog posts. Uh, whether it's uh, started out journal writing, writing journal stuff, you know, little short stories that I just exercise, you know, here's here's a scenario, write about this, you know, stuff like that. Um, writing in my business journals that I was told you about. Even in Nano 2009, I wrote a novel. Didn't really complete it. I've still got it, <laughs> uh, but I wrote a novel just to see if I could do it. And I, you know, it's pretty okay story I guess I just really kind of dropped off the face of the earth and never really completed it started another novel before that one and it didn't really pan out whatsoever just ran out of, out of, out of ideas and I don't know one day maybe I could publish a, a book I'm already an author because I've got my courses out there and those are books ebooks that are you know actually available to the public so in a sense they are published you know but it's always something I've, I've been intrigued about I've wrote poetry you know different things like that Something I've always been intrigued about. Well, lately I've been get bitten by the writer bug again and had that need to scratch that itch. So it's been a stressful thing because, once again, um, that fills up your plate even more. And recently I wrote down a quote um, that I came up with. It just came to my mind and I wrote it down so I wouldn't lose it. Wouldn't lose it. And it was something along the lines of, um, if your plate is full, reduce your portion sizes. Reduce your portions. So I've been on trying to lose weight and everything, and I've lost 15 pounds so far. And right now I'm at a stalemate, I'm at a plateau, so I've got to up my exercise and, and lower my calories. That's always been something I've struggled with all my life, and I want to get, take control of it. But anyway, that's a side note. Um, so... I've been toying with, you know, as far as losing weight, you learn different tricks and techniques, one of which is reducing your portions, getting a smaller plate, because then what you're eating makes it look bigger. If you have a big circle and this amount in the middle, this amount looks small. But if you have a smaller circle and the same amount, this looks big. It's an optical illusion to your eye. And I found that on a YouTube video, and I forget what it, what it was called, but it was, uh, it was a really interesting video about losing weight. I uh, can't remember what that was, but anyway... When your plate size gets too full, reduce your portions. You got too much on your plate, reduce your portions. The same applies in business life. You got too many irons in the fire, you need to turn the oven off, douse some water, and turn some of that stuff off. Put some of them on the back burner, okay? Even turn the back burner off. Forget about it. So there's been, you know, the writing to me, I saw it as another chore, another, well, how am I going to do it? The writing takes forever. It's going to take a lot of work. You know, it's going to take a lot of, Lonely days and nights, toiling over the computer, trying to get stuff written like authors do. and But yet there's many authors out there that just turn books out like crazy. So I'm always, you know, in the search for productivity hacks and things like that and getting things done. But 
anyway, I've been considering a different solution as opposed to fiction writing, as opposed to going back and writing stories and all that. I do have some of that, I, you know, in mind maybe. Nothing really, you know, fancy. Really, just for my own personal use, just a writing for me. Okay, nothing for the public or anything yet or anything like that. But I did come up with a solution. And after toiling away at this for a while, it's like I had another nudge from the Lord. And it basically, it was to do what I'm already doing, um, and that is writing for business and project-related purposes. In other words, uh, right now I'm currently writing articles for my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials website related to previous YouTube videos in the past so that I can have some uh, quality article content on the site which will rank better in the, in the social or in the uh, search engines. So kind of repurposing that content basically. So there's a, a thing I'm doing. I'm already writing business journal stuff, you know, so there's something I could do. And I've considered going and started writing again in just a regular notebook just to be doing it. And something that really was informative to me is this next thing I'm going to go to here in a minute. But it's an interview with somebody who talked about that even if I don't write anything down, I mean, even if I don't look at what I've written, I like to think that some of the writing that you do sticks and sinks in. Even if you never go back, it, at least you've got it on the page, and it may be something from your head, uh, because as it's processing, you don't really can see the scope of it. But when you write it down and you've got it there in front of you, then you read it again, it comes back in, it's kind of been translated in the process. And so, oh, oh I get it now. You know, it, it sticks now. It sticks with you. And I'll get to who that was in a minute. But I've decided instead of stressing myself out trying to take a complete opposite course from where I'm at and where I'm currently focused on, the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course, just let the writing work with that, okay? Um, continue work writing my business journal, uh, thoughts and ideas and things like that. Continue writing articles, continue writing, uh, you know, different things like that. Um, and the other thing that I've recently picked up is there's a short, there's a story I tried to complete and I haven't really done, uh, I haven't really completed it. And I was like really torn over the idea of, okay, here's the story. I'm going to pick this note back up, notebook back up. It's been five years since I picked it up. Okay, and I picked it up. I started writing an entry. And I, I kid you not, when I wrote this entry, it was five years to the day of the, the last entry I wrote in this notebook. And that, that blew me away. I was like, what, what that, is that confirmation that I should just continue on the same path, just writing or whatever? I don't know. I just thought it was a pretty interesting coincidence. Sign, whatever you call it. But anyway, rather than beat myself over the head with how this story should end up, and I read the whole story and thought, well, I should pick it up and keep from there. It's been five years. The story is gone. Instead, what I did was I started this book from where that was and said, you know what, here's how I wanted the story to go. Here's how I saw it ending up. It may have not ended up that way. Who knows? Now the story's closed. Now I can move on. Okay, so I closed that uh, cold case, so to speak, if you're familiar with that term. I closed that and started something new. Okay, and I'm going to read an excerpt for this here in just a little bit. This is not a most gun, by the way. This is something called a readables. And Five years ago, I guess, when I got this, it was distributed by Books A Million. And I don't think they make these anymore. They have all kinds of other notebooks. They've got most kinds and things like that. But uh, I'm still right now almost done. I've got 23 pages to go in my business journal before I can move on to my uh, newest, what's going to be my newest business journal, the Ecosystems Journal that I, that I talked about uh, one or two hangouts ago. Still not got to, you know, write in this thing. I'm really excited to. This thing's got, I think, 192 pages. And it's college ruled, very awesome uh, alternative to most kinds because, for one thing, the pages are perforated. So if you are a big Evernote person, perforate them or tear them out, scan them. It's in Evernote. You don't have to worry about it anymore. You know, if you're doing things like notes and things like that, if you're doing business, if you're doing a journal, then obviously you want to keep it in here. But this is a good alternative, and it's quite a bit bigger. I'm kind of liking this, you know, portable pocket size thing that you can take anywhere, but. Uh, what really got me is, is some of the authors when they write, they're like, "Hey, I've got, you know, I do, I do ten of these a year, you know, I write ten of these a year." And I'm thinking, I've got all kinds of ideas. Why don't I just write, you know, pass the time, you know, help me get better at uh, 
organizing my thoughts and things like that. So anyway, I'm sorry if this is kind of scattered, um, but that's what my possible solution would be, what I've been considering, is just continue writing what I'm writing in line with my current goals, not against it. Maybe one day I will write a novel. Maybe one day I'll decide to pick up that old novel and finish the last three or four chapters. Maybe one day I'll write a completely new book and I can focus on it then. But for right now, focus all my writing efforts, and my, maybe not only writing, maybe other things for that matter. Maybe I have another dream or another idea I want to work on. How, but how can I use that uh, to help further my current goals? Chances are there'll be time for that by itself later. How can I use that, whether it be writing, whether it be reading books? Maybe I love to read. Let's read books related to, you know, uh, business related to how to, how to uh, run your business the way God wants you to run your business. Um, maybe a fiction book here and there, but nothing that will take you all and sidetrack you from your goal. Okay, that's important. So that's what I've decided to do. Uh, and I'll kind of you know go over some of this here in just a minute. But a great writing resource I want to share with you guys is called the Creative Pen. Okay, now this is a great writing resource because when I went there, it has all kinds, she's got all kinds of awesome YouTube videos interviewing authors, interviewing people that uh, design her, the covers for her books, interviewing people that uh, are in the publishing industry or, or editors, people that have wrote How to Write, people that have wrote you know, blockbuster hits and continue to sell millions of books, millions of dollars worth of books, all kinds of cool features. Plus, there's all kinds of really great writing material. And this person's name is Joanna Penn. And real quick, I'm going to do a screen share with you guys and show you exactly um, what she looks like. I don't know what she looks like, but the, what the website looks like, okay? So if the screen share doesn't collapse and crash on me like it has before, I think it's pretty much been worked out. I don't know. Let's hope so. If it let me or not. Appreciate the one viewer that's still hanging out here. I'm not sure if that's still Nick or Neil, excuse me, Neil from uh, scaletrainer.com. If you are still here watching this, uh, Neil, I appreciate that. Taking a lot of time out to do this. So I'm not, I don't think it's going to let me do this. I'm going to close that and go back to screen share here. Huh. For some reason, screen share does. Oh, here we go. I think it might be working. I think it's loading now, in case, uh, maybe, is it? All right, give me just a second here. We'll get this going. Hmm. Not sure what's going on here, guys. Not sure. All the other, uh, all the other apps seem to be working except for that one. I don't know what the deal is with that. Screen share is not working. But anyway, man, I hate that. I was going to share that with you guys. Anyway. We'll just go ahead and uh, forget about it for now, but we'll talk about it anyway. Anyway, it's called thecreativepen.com, and uh, let's see here. Make sure it's not another window. Okay. It's P-E-N-N, thecreativepen.com, because the name, the woman's name is Joanna Penn. She writes under the name J.F. Penn, and if you go to her website, um, you can see she's got you know all kinds of uh, uh, writing. There's there's different uh, heading titles here: writing, self-publishing, marketing, entrepreneur, home, blog, start here, podcast, books, courses, speaking about, and contact. Now her podcast is basically the same thing that she has on her YouTube page, where you can go to her YouTube and um, 
watch her YouTube videos. It's basically an audio version of that video, which is brilliant. I mean, I thought about doing that for guitar, but huh, I don't really know how to do that because the guitar is more of a uh, watch it as it happens type of thing, you know. So, um, video's lagging again. We'll try to fix that. So, yeah, she's already up to 187 podcasts. And that's a lot. Okay, 187 podcasts. And I think if you uh, if you go to the start here, um, let's see. Let me make sure that that's what I'm thinking of. Um, she's got a lot of good, you know, ideas and different things. Like the number one question I get asked every day, number two question I get asked, number three question I get asked. Uh, publishing, book marketing stuff, um, more about Joanne's journey, different things like that. Um, I don't see it anywhere, but if you just go to YouTube and type in Joanna Penn, P-E-N-N, that's J-O-A-N-N-A-P-E-N-N, -N -N, watch on writing, different things like that. So she's got her a little about me there. Uh, the, here's the YouTube URL. It's youtube.com slash the creative pen. Once again, that's P-E-N-N, -N, the creative pen. That'll take you straight to her YouTube. But anyway, she's got some really, really good stuff when it comes to uh, writing material and, you know, learning how to write. More specifically, she's got a video with a woman named Roz. Oh, I've never forgot it. Is it Roz? Um, let me look that up here. Let me look that up. I'll get it wrong if I say it. I want to say Roz Morris. Uh, we'll find out for sure. She's got two interviews with Roz Morris, both of which are totally worth watching. Very, very good material. Um, let's see. If, is that the name of it? Let me just do a search on her YouTube for Roz, R-O-Z. Roz Morris, yes. There's one called Writing Literary Fiction with Roz Morris and Writing Fiction Bringing Characters, Bringing Your Characters to Life with Roz Morris. Both of these videos are about 40, 45 minutes long a piece, but they're awesome. They have tons of good ideas as far as writing, uh, yeah, as far as, you know, writing advice and as far as, you know, uh, how to create your own novel. And, but, but there's a lot of good ideas as far as, you know, um, like if you're trying to get into writing, if you just want to write. That's where the quote I was telling you about earlier about when she finds it, if she just writes, if she even never goes back and reads it again, it, she would like to think that some of this stuff sinks in. I mean, that right there was golden because to me, I'm like, I'm feeling guilty that I don't go back and read all my old journals or all this other stuff. You know, like it's some kind of task that once I write it, I'm obligated to do that. No, it's a it's a it's an in the moment thing that you want to get your ideas down on paper, even if you never look at them again. At least you've got them down, and they're somewhere that you can access them again, whether it's on paper and pen, on the computer, whatever. I do prefer paper and pen, by the way. Uh, you don't have to worry about this right here crashing. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to worry about this crashing. You don't have to. This auto saves, you know. <laughs> when you write it down, it auto saves it for you. You don't have to worry about setting all it up. You don't have to be technically proficient and savvy, you know. Anybody can do this, okay? So that's my opinion on that. But anyway, the Created Pen, really good resource, thecreatedpen.com. Definitely want to check that out. And I really wish, guys, that I could have screen. Here we go. Now the screen share seems to be wanting to work. Don't understand why, but it does. Okay, so let's try to get this to work here. Let's go back to the screen share, and right there, start screen share. Please don't crash. Okay, yes, awesome. All right, here we go. The Creative Pen. This is Joanna, okay? Really good, really good uh, information about her stuff. These are some of her books. Um, this You can go to the contact, the speaking, courses, books, things like that. The podcast, like I told you about earlier. If you go there, you've got um, 187 different podcasts, okay? 
really, really good stuff. And like I said, this is basically the audio version of her videos on YouTube. Now, if you go to About Me or About Here, you can go to and you scroll down. Now, this top don't change. It's down here that changes. You scroll down, and basically she's, I think it said, yes, yeah, she joined NaNoWriMo in 2009. Basically, that's when I joined. And she had an idea that blossomed her first novel. February, she her first thrill novel became available, and now she is a New York Times bestseller, okay? So that's how awesome her journey is, all right? So we scroll down all the way on the About section, and here's her YouTube. You go to the Create a Pen, and you'll get to see all of the cool YouTube stuff from her website or from her uh, page. And she writes under the name JFPN, like I said. Okay, so these are all her playlists, self-publishing with print on demand while I'm returning to, you know, print version because she's, she's a big ebook advocate. Uh, so there's Ross Morris right there, bringing your characters to life. So this is writing creativity, book marketing, promotion, um, popular uploads, author entrepreneur, the business of being author. I mean, really, really good stuff, and they're decent uh, lengths, you know, 43 minutes, 32 minutes. Really good stuff, and once again, if you go and click on that little cog, and you on this little wheel up here, and click on the hat and the two times speed or the five times speed, you can watch it in double time, and you don't have to worry about, oh, this is it's 30 minutes long. I don't have 30 minutes. Well, cut it in half. Listen to it in two times speed and get in 15 minutes. You know, it was really good stuff for interviews and things like that. Anyway, so that's really cool. Um, she's got that, and as far as writing, you got self-publishing, marketing, entrepreneur advice. Okay, so we got writing here. Writing a book can change your life. Now, this right here really inspired me. Some of my journals. Look at this right here. I mean, <laughs> uh, maybe you'll never go back and read them, but this is showing that you have been productive. This is showing that you got things done, and you know, who says you know there's a book in me? Well, yeah, if you write one journal, that's a book. It might not be a 50,000 word novel, 100,000 word novel, but hey, you, you just written a book, you know. So writing advice, getting started, writing fiction, writing nonfiction, top audios on writing. Here's, the, here's her audios that she's done probably, yeah, I think so. So these are different podcasts, I think. I mean, tons of stuff. Now, if we go to the entrepreneur thing, this is pretty cool for people like us, you know, people that are watching this that are entrepreneurs. Business of being an author entrepreneur. So this can, I mean, this can go from, you don't have to be just author entrepreneur. You know, it, this is different ideas that we can use in our business, you know, uh, anyway. So creating other products and services beyond ebooks and print, you know, all these other things, record, produce audio books, and any of us can make our own audio books or, you know, things like that. What's your definite su success, you know, all these success things, once again, Make sure it lines up with the word. Um, my own entrepreneurial journey. I mean, I would love to just sit down and read all of this stuff. This stuff really is intriguing to me, and I hope it is to you guys too. Uh, I know this doesn't do, have to do with guitar stuff as much, but like I said, this this came at the end because of that. So all these things that you can go to, practicalities, whatever that is, the tools I use in my creative business, how to make the most of all this stuff, funnels to cause action, writing fast. Uh, lessons learned from write, publish, repeat, writing fast. I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to open that up because I want to see what she thinks about writing fast. Write, publish, repeat. By okay, so this is a uh, a book review probably more than likely. So yeah, I might check that out later. But anyway, go to her website, thecreativepen.com, and you can see all this awesome awesome stuff. Okay, so now. Let's exit out of screen share and get back to uh, get back to the video here. All right, so that worked very good. The last thing I um, was going to talk about is uh, just a couple of different resources, okay? Um, actually, I'm going to read from this probably last. So the resources are coming first. Now, I've been writing, like I said, I've been writing a little bit more in this in this book. And this uh, right now I'm up to page 80. Just finished page 80 last night. But I'm going to be going through uh, a certain entry here. I'm going to be reading to you guys, okay? So it's going to be interesting. I started out with a new beginning, a new direction in here. So all this 66 pages of a story, gone. Now I'm starting fresh. 
And what I was really dreading was here having all these not, all these uh, journals that were incomplete, having uh, like half the journal be complete and half the journal be blank pages. Well, the first half maybe two years ago, and then me going back and starting this year and then completing that one and then going to another book that I've not finished and do the same thing. I was worried about it all being scattered everywhere, but I, I just wanted to write. So I just wanted to fill this book up, and so now that's what I'm doing now. This is my writing journal, I guess. So the, the one I'm going to talk about is deliberate, persistent writing, okay? Now, I think I'll read, I'll skim over this, and I'll read some of this to you, and you get an idea of what's going on through my head, okay? Um, but first, let me show you. Let me get, get some, give you some other ideas that are real cool. And I've got links to these things below. Um, by the way, the Ecosystem Journal, I think you just go, you just do a search for Ecosystems Journal, and you can be able to find that. But I, I don't know how many of you people, and this would be good for some of you people that watch to this far, to the end of this, this would be a good idea to see how, how many people you know what this is and ha have one of these, okay? Okay, so this is a pen, all right? Obviously, it's a pen. And some of you probably already knew what this is, so if you know what this is, leave me a comment below. If you have one of these, leave me a comment below. Tell me what you think about it, you know? These are really good pens. This is called the Space Pen, okay? And I've had this thing for probably five years. It's been a long time. And I just left it in the case, never really messed with it. I didn't want to lose it. I was afraid of losing it. Well, it's perfect pocket size, and I don't even use this little clip. You can order the clip separate, and uh, it was just hard to get off, so I just left it on there. I just put it in my pocket now. It's, it's perfect size, but what happens is you take it and you pull it out, and you've got this pen, okay? We've got an O-ring here, rubber O-ring. We've got a little etched engraving. You can't really see that. Well, maybe you can, but this is really good grip, okay? Your, your fingers do not slide from that means. It's really nice grip. Now, you don't write with it like this, okay? You write with it like this. It makes it a full-size pen. That's really cool. This particular one is called the Bullet. It's probably, I think it says it's their most popular uh, and number one selling uh, variation on the Space Pen. Now, I've left a link below. It's an Amazon link that you can go and it takes you directly to a search for these pens. Okay, so you pull it out, invert it, put it in there, and now you got a full-size pen. Okay, so this is really cool. The good thing about pace, space pens are, if you don't know the deal, they've been around for years, and probably since the 60s, I think, is when they come up with it, when the men landed on the moon and all that, somewhere around 60s, 70s. But uh, Paul, I think his name's Paul, Paul Fisher, uh, got invented these, and he uses, this thing writes underwater, it writes upside down, it doesn't dry out, It, it uh, I think it says it's, Seems like I read somewhere that uh, you can let it sit for 100 years and it won't ever dry up. It uses a, if I'm not mistaken, a to toxitropic or topid something ink. And what that is, if you go, you know, you find more about it if you do some searches for it and if you check on that link below. Basically, it's a link, uh, it's a link, uh, an ink that is kind of like a gel ink until you start writing with it. When, you, when, you, when that rollerball activates and you start writing with it, it converts into a liquid. And the cool thing is, is it's pressurized by uh, CO2. I think it's what it is. So you have uh, a little bit of CO2 in there forcing a little ball bearing to push the ink out. So that's why you can write with it upside down. It's, not, it's no longer affected by gravity because there's pressure forming in the barrel of the ink, okay, of the ink uh, chamber. So it forces the ink out when you start writing. And that's why it doesn't dry out, too, is because it stays basically a gel until you start writing with it. So it's always, that ink is always pressurized so that it's always writing or able to write when you need to. And I started writing with it, and it's really smooth, a really smooth pen if you like ballpoint pens. I really like the pilot top style pens, and I'm really getting to uh, other style pens like Le Pen. These are really good pens, too. These are more like felt tip. But uh, I just, this is my go-to pen now for for writing. I keep it in my pocket, and that's a really good, it's called a space pen. Check that out. The other resource I was going to go over real quick, uh, we're about done right here. I'm about to wrap this up. The other resource is something I uh, recently found in um, Cracker Barrel, 
and decided I was going to look these up, and I found them at a cheaper price at Walmart. And you can get these at Walmart, and they come in different packages. There's the original, and there's another one called Actions, and there's another one called Travel or something like that. But these are Rory's Story Cubes, okay? These are nine cubes, and comes with a little pouch if you buy it like this. These are nine cubes. Each one of them has a different image on them, okay? So this one gives you an arrow. There's your light bulb, uh, time or something like that, or somebody sleeping, a little, you know, speech bubble. And you got another one over here, it's a horseshoe magnet. And this, you, I even saw this as like a little, I don't know, a little gargoyle or something, or fire. Okay, so what, it, and this is an L. I don't know why this is on here. I never really used, figured out what to use that for anyway. So you got all these different images on nine different cubes. And what it is, is you take them, and you roll them out, and you take and you start piecing them together one by one. Say, so I landed on a foot. Okay, you start with once upon a time. Okay, once upon a time, Bigfoot roamed the earth, and he was being hunted by all kinds of people, and he was trying to get away. The next cube. So he said to himself, blah 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 blah. The next cube would be something else, and you piece it together like that until you come up with all nine blocks. Now, that's a pretty cool party game or whatever, but the cool thing is when you roll this, this gives you ideas for creativity, ideas for what stories to write next, you know. So that's really cool. Uh, another thing I don't have a link for, but while you're on the Amazon links for Rory Star Cube or Fisher Space Pen, you can type this in Amazon and it'll pull right up. Another resource I use is awesome. It's called the Writer's Block, okay? Now, let me just give you an idea of this thing. It looks small, right? It's not. <laughs> Let's try that again. Slow motion. It's huge. Okay. This is 786 ideas to jumpstart your imagination. It has articles, little articles in here. It's got one, what they call catch words, catch uh, idea word, spark word, like the spark word here is superstitious. So you write about the first thing that comes in your mind regarding superstition. Uh, here's a little idea. Write about your worst habit. And it lists a bunch of cigars here, or cigarettes. All kinds of different things you can, you know, go for. And images to spark your imagination, too. So, like, when it says, um, wish, the word sparks your imagination, but also the image sparks your imagination. So it's really cool. Uh, the writer's block. Highly recommend that. The author's name is Jason Reculak. Uh, R E K U L A K. Really good, really good ideas for stuff like this. And I've had this thing for years too. And it's it's cool to just to have around when you're bored and nothing else to do, you know. So I'm starting to get a little bit um, fatigued after talking so long and trying to think about all these different things. So we're going to wrap this up uh, with a little bit of reading for you guys, okay? This is some ideas I had on writing what I was thinking about doing. Trying to figure out what I was going to do about writing. Uh, didn't know what to do. Didn't know what I was going to say. So if, uh, on every one of my entries, I leave a little spot at the top so that I could go back, read over it, and give the theme as the title of what it's about. This one's called Deliberate Persistent Writing. It's from June the 30th, 2014. I wrote it at 1045 at night. And uh, it took me about an hour, I think, to write all this. This was like seven pages. Okay, I'll get through this real quick, though. All right, and this is going to be it for the day. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been probably two hours, maybe an hour and a half. I don't know. For you that weren't interested in this last part, you know, you could have you know, quit a long time ago, but hopefully you stick, stuck around. So here's what's coming from the mind of me when I'm writing this. I may skim around, you know, whatever. Deliberate persistent writing. No thoughts as of yet, but I just can't get the craving to write out of my system. The need to create, to create has so many possible outlets in which to manifest itself. I've created hundreds of guitar videos, but that hasn't satisfied my creative yearning. Sometimes only words will do when other means of creating come short. I'm writing now just to satisfy the need for it. 
So there's not really a train of cohesive thought going on. I haven't really tried the story cubes, what I just mentioned, from the last entry uh, since that entry. In other words, I haven't tried them since I used them the last time. I guess I just need to write and dive in regardless of if I have a reason or not, if my thoughts are just perfect or not. I'm still using my space pen, perhaps subconsciously, to, no, I'm still using my space pen to perhaps subconsciously make me write more, if not better. Sort of like the subliminal messages that Reebok or Nike shoes will make you run or play basketball better. Maybe it works. I'm writing now, aren't I? I suspect it may take a while to complete this little notebook. I feel I just need to take it everywhere with me and write wherever, whenever the notion hits me. Writers write. Real writers write regardless of if their writing is perfect or not. I put a little star by that, okay? Real writers write regardless of if their writing is perfect or not. Side note. Now, I had a lot of these in this entry. Side note. I'm listening to an author interview of Joanna Penn interviewing Roz Morris of NailYourNovel.com on YouTube. And she just mentioned, as I was writing this, she just said, like I said, I listen to stuff while I'm working or writing or whatever. She just mentioned, Joanna just mentioned, that she fills up around 10 Moleskine-style notebooks like this one per year. I've got a long way to go, but I'm reminded that slow and steady wins the race. Side note number two. Now, look at this. And I haven't done this. This is just the first time I've done this. I use these little highlighters uh, for my planners, you know, my weekly planner or whatever. I put a big old highlight around this so that I will not forget it. Side note number two, Joanna mentions an interesting idea that makes me feel much less guilty for not going back and ever reading what I write. She says that it seems that just in the act of writing things down, some things tend to stick and sink in even if she never gets goes back and looks at her many stacks of notebooks again. This is just the motivation I need. Now, you saw earlier a big stack of notebooks she has. If she never looks at it again, she likes to think that some of these ideas stick around, okay? Really, really a powerful thought. It's really another sort of perfectionitis when you think about it, holding yourself accountable for not just writing but reading everything you've written. Think of how much time is wasted either reading fiction or nonfiction or even reading about writing when you could spend it solving this problem of not writing by just writing. How novel an idea. Okay, now if you missed that, go back and watch it again. That's good stuff. It seems like I have so many notebooks to start with. To start, excuse me, it seems like I have so many notebooks that start well, then almost happens. Sort of like King Agrippa in Acts 26, 28, where he says, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Almost another notebook finished. I'm a good starter, quotes, but apparently not a good finisher. I feel the key that boils it all down is deliberate persistence. Okay? If you're not deliberate in your goals and what you're looking to achieve, kiss it goodbye and move along to something you can get excited about. If you can't get lost in something, like I've been getting lost in this entry for the past 45 minutes, then why bother? Why struggle against what's not moving you forward toward your goals? Okay? I'm getting chill bumps because I just talked about this, and I haven't written this. I haven't even looked at this entry in the last two or three days since I've had it. All this stuff is confirming what I just talked to you guys about. Yes, writing has always been somewhat of a catch-22 for me, but like I've stated before, I always come back to it. One thing I am finishing well is my Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course, which is somewhat ironic since it's been one of the most difficult projects to complete due to all the video editing issues I've had. It's been at least double the amount of work I put into my first course, Texas Blues Guitar, but knowing how valuable it will be to other aspiring musicians is what not only propels me forward, but pulls me toward the completion of of the work. There's still much work to be done, 
I'm currently about to work on video five of six, such as DVD authoring and product images, neck diagrams, tablature, writing, DVD manufacturing, website design, etc. But that's not what has my attention. It's the absolute confidence, I dare say, knowing that the world needs bluegrass guitar essentials. And it's my job to convince them as much as I'm convinced. Let's, and it's my job to convince them as much as I'm convinced that has that has tractor beamed my attention to the finished product. It was kind of poorly written, but I was writing it, get it down. In other words, it's my job to convince them um, as much as I'm convinced, that's what has got me pulled toward to do this. That I've got to convince everyone of, of bluegrass guitar scenes of how much I believe in it, and how much I believe it can help other people. As I mentioned before, I never read these words. I may never read these words again, but chances are some of this, if not a lot of it, will sink in, and I'll be able to consciously or subconsciously recall it when I need the motivation and inspiration to finish the work ahead. Okay, almost done. This is, this is been quick. Random quote by Ros Morris. A lot of writing fiction is making the readers un understand why something matters. And this came from one of those interviews. Two random thoughts. Number one, this pen writes so smoothly. Number two, this notebook lies flat quite nicely. <laughs> random. I want to write more, but it's incoherent, sporadic thoughts, and I should be going to bed. It's 1145 p.m., which is an hour later. So I'll turn in for now and make it a determined, deliberate persistence to keep this notebook and pen nearby. And my, all my things with P.S. Seven pages. Not bad for making up for not writing the past seven days. Okay? So that's just a little bit of what goes on in my mind, some of the thoughts I have about writing. And not only writing, but this was actually accomplishing two things. It was actually accomplishing my desire to write, that pull I talked about, and it was also accomplishing getting some ideas down and kind of sorting through things, kind of getting all the, the clutter organized, you know, kind of just sorted out. Okay, so that's it for this day, today's Hangouts. Um, I want to wish you guys a happy 4th of July and a safe 4th of July. Please be safe. Please be careful with fireworks, wear safety, goggles, whatever. Don't play with fire. Don't let your kids light fireworks if they're not old enough to know what they're doing. Please be careful. Buckle up because there are some uh, uh, crazy drivers out there. No matter how good you drive, you always got to you know, take care of yourself and watch out for other people. Please do check that out, and I just this keeps coming back to me. I cannot leave without saying this. Recently got a book. Uh, been looking at this guy's stuff on YouTube, and you know me. This year, one of my goals is to master time management and be as productive as I can with um, saving time. You know, redeeming the time, like the Bible talks about. Just got a book that I have heard over and over again. It's just like I said earlier. You 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 never hear of or see a car of this specific model until you buy one or until your friend buys one. Then you're seeing it everywhere, you know. I don't remember what I was even relating that to earlier, but yeah, uh, I never did. I was mowing the lawn when I talked about how I never really thought about it, but now that I've got, you know, been wanting to have a lawnmower guy, I'm seeing you know, the applications of this everywhere. Well, I never really seen or heard about this guy until recently, and now everything I listen to refers back to this. It's called Getting Things Done by David Allen. I just finished one of the books that I'm behind on, and I've got another one to do. Uh, just got been done reading a bunch of fiction books and things like that. But one of my business books I finally finished, and then I'm going to get another one finished soon. Then I can get started on this one. I'm really stoked to see what this guy has to say in this book. I've already been applying some of the principles he talked about in some of the videos that he's created. But uh, definitely interested in checking that out. Can't wait to start delving into that. And... Uh, so thanks so much, guys, for watching today. I'm going to get off here, let this thing do its thing.
and see you guys in the next hangout, whatever that may be. Hopefully this has been informative. Hopefully it's been helpful to you, even though it hasn't had a lot of guitar stuff in there. I mean, it's just all about guitar entrepreneur stuff. Sometimes there might be one or more. Sometimes there might be more of the other. But uh, thanks so much anyway for investing your time to watch this, whether it's now live or it's later on down the road. And, you know, should have said this at the beginning, but if you want to watch this in half the time, speed it up like I told, showed you how to do it earlier. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys. Remember next week, the interview video with Nick Minion, and remember to stay tuned for a bunch of awesome electric guitar leaks coming up and hopefully me getting to some of these Tony Rice requests on the Guitar Lesson Suggest box. Thanks so much for watching. Check out bluegrassguitarcentrals.com uh, to check out the webisodes before the pricing, uh, introductory pricing goes away. Check out www.secretsoftexasbluesguitar.com for that resource for uh, lead electric guitar and for um, the newsletter videos. You'll be glad you did. I'll see you guys next time. Be safe. Have a good 4th of July, and as always, God bless.